Digital presence is the only way you exist online. And today's guest, David Vance, is an expert in helping you amplify that presence. In this episode, you'll learn a simple tactic for creating video content that will help you create a loyal and raving fan base, plus other video creation hacks that will help you get the right set of eyes on your content and gain consistent, unique views. David Vance is an accomplished ed editor and producer with a decade of experience in television and digital marketing. He's the creative director of Driven Media, where he works with hundreds of clients each year to create exceptionally compelling video and animation. Today's episode is sponsored by How to Conquer Your Bullshit with CPR, my free training that will help you bring your message to the masses. Sign up for the free training at rubyframon.com forward slash CPR. And finally, if you're new to this podcast or if you're a loyal thought leader and just haven't done this yet, please make sure you take a moment to drop a rating and review on iTunes. I will be forever grateful. Now it is time to dive into some awesome video content creation hacks with David Vance. Challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. I'm your host, Ruby Fremont, and I'm here as a catalyst for you, the new generation of thought leaders. Join me every week as I dive into raw and real conversations that will help you amplify your presence, influence, and impact. Hey, thought leaders, I am back with another expert who crossed my path at the New Media Summit last year in Austin. David, he caught my eye because he stood up on stage and said something along the lines of how to get more clicks and views. And instantly I was like, fuck yes, I want to hear more about this. And I know my audience wants to hear more about this because the social media landscape is super noisy right now and everyone wants to find ways to get their content seen. So David, welcome to today's Thought Leader. I'm super excited to dive into this conversation with you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, I've been writing scripts pretty much all day, so it's really nice to talk to a person. <laughs> to take a break from, yeah. from just working solo and actually talk to another human being. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of the curse of uh, any, any editor or any content producer is you spend a lot of your time uh, in a dark room uh, moving a playhead back and forth. But mm. yeah, it's great to be here. Awesome. I'm happy to have you here. Um, so I'm sure in the line of work that you do, you get a lot of people who are like, David, I just want to get more eyes on what I'm doing. And I feel like that question, that, that desire, it takes a lot more behind the scenes to make that happen than just like, hey, let me just boost an ad and have this be seen by multiple eyes. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, we're getting a lot of that of how do I get more views, but right now what I'm seeing a lot of as well is people uh, ignoring the amount of views they're getting on from the general public. Uh, I think a lot of people are still stuck a little bit on the stuff that's been taught since you know 2008 of uh, getting their back-end funnels all in line, getting uh, their automated processes, and then uh, once they get all, that all cleaned up and have spent thousands of dollars, they're wondering why they don't have anybody clicking through to it. Mm. Um, so I get a lot of people who uh, still haven't come to realize that it's 2018 and that your digital presence is sort of uh, the only way you exist online. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I do all day. Uh, now, I come from a TV background. I worked on uh, reality TV and uh, moved to corporate video. Now I'm the creative director of Driven Media and uh, work with hundreds of clients every year to do just that. That's awesome. And so really what you do is you help, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you help <laughs> people like amplify their digital presence, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, we work, essentially, we work on the same business model as uh, digital content strategy houses that I've worked at before, but we've adapted it into something that a small business can use who doesn't have multinational arms. Um, right. So we're doing a lot of content production, uh, content building, uh, and what we're always focused on is what does your overall digital image look like? Uh, people get 
or people will post one video or one thing and think they're good. But what we want to look at is if I meet you at an event uh, and I Google you, what does your overall body of content look like? Uh, because your digital footprint is who you are uh, on the internet. Uh, and the thing that I yell from stage all the time mm -hmm. is that biggest, your biggest gift and your biggest curse as an entrepreneur in this year, in 2018, is that you have full agency over what that digital image looks like uh, mm. that you're putting out there, but very taking full advantage of that. Yeah, and I love that you say that. Uh, did, did that answer? Yeah, I mean, I love that you said it's a blessing and a curse because it truly is. You yeah. know, like you, we have total control mm -hmm. over our digital footprint and we have total control over our digital pro footprint. Oh, you know, shit that you posted, <laughs> right. you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, it, it's still there. And um, I know that I've been experiencing some of that in just like my recent pivot in my business. And, you know, whereas before I used to be a self-love coach and all my content was self-love and I'd be in the top five of, of Google search to set in self-love. And now I'm like, go away, go away. I don't need more mm -hmm. interviews on self-love. That's not what I do anymore. And so I'm in the process of creating this whole other digital footprint. Um, but what's insane to me <laughs> is how people do devalue the, the power of content and they focus so much on the funnels and the back end. And it's like, mm -hmm. but what, what are you putting out there for people to sink their teeth into? What are you putting out there for people to actually um, create that connection with you? And I'm so glad that you brought that up from the get-go because that's how I built my business. Um, I didn't have funnels up until this mm -hmm. year. And um, I've just been focused on content. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on why content is king. Yeah. Um, in just sort of launching off of what you just said, the, uh, the biggest misconception I see people make all the time is – or they have the idea that starting to produce a video and starting to have a steady stream of content is something that they should, uh, they should put off until they have a larger fan base to consume it when it's kind of the inverse there. Um, a, a large body of content uh, is what's going to get you a, a rabid and attentive fan base. And once somebody subscribed and uh, has dedicated to seeing your message, then you don't have to pay to advertise to them anymore. And you, you said it right, content, uh, content's key right now. You can see it, uh, especially in the last couple of years in larger corporations. It's why every fast food chain now has to have a snarky Twitter account. Mm -hmm. um, people want to have personal or feel like they personally know the brands they're buying from. Uh, so the, the age of uh, filming a video, spending thousands of dollars on it, uh, positioning it, going through traditional media, it's kind of coming to an end, especially for people who are uh, uh, thought leaders or selling any kind of service-based something. Uh, I can go online and find uh, 10,000 life coaches, but mm -hmm. what I'm really buying is a person. So that's how we try to set up video uh, from that right. perspective. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really happy that you brought up production um, mm -hmm. because a lot of people, a lot of the clients I work with, perfection is like one of their stumbling blocks and yeah. they want to wait until they have the, the perfect, super expensive cam camera or cameraman or like a digital production team to put together this perfect looking video for them to launch their first live. And it's like, no, just grab your phone, mm -hmm. turn it on, do a Facebook live um, what are your thoughts on fully produced versus self-produced on iPhone? Yeah, I talk about this a lot and it's kind of, uh, it's kind of a bummer for someone like me coming from the production world. Who, I know, that's why I'm asking years you. And years, yeah, <laughs> are, we putting and out, are we putting you out of a job? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> thankfully, script writing is something that will never go out of style, but uh, we're, uh, we're moving away from it for an everyday thing. Thing. Um, the camera in your phone is as good as a top of the line camera was just a few years ago. Uh -huh. uh, what people are doing when they do that is 
creating what they think of as valid excuses not to be doing something. Mm. Um, we do cross tests a lot. Uh, what we do here at Driven Media, we do a lot of back end analytics on our client stuff, um, running social media content videos, seeing how many views we can get and AB testing stuff. Uh, what we're seeing is, and this doesn't apply to something that's planted on a sales page or something, mm -hmm. but when we're running ads meant for social media, when we're running stuff on people's uh, social media accounts, mm -hmm. there's exactly no difference between if it's a video that they paid for me to fly out there with a crew to shoot, uh, looks brilliant, uh, tons of animation and uh, editing, mm -hmm. and a video that somebody uh, shot in their living room and we threw some subtitles and a couple of graphics on there. It's the exact same click through rate and the exact same uh, interaction rate. Well, um, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I mean, I had a client I was just talking to the other day. We were um, doing some simple animations over their video and they started talking about trying to price out uh, sort of a full scale shoot thing. And that's kind of half of what I do. But I was trying to explain to him, you're trying to upsell yourself on something you don't need right now. Mm -hmm. uh, people think that money and production value is what's going to sell them on social media when really it's clarity of content, uh, clarity of tone, and clarity of message. Uh, if you can sit down and come up with, uh, with 24 really killer uh, one-liner ideas that you think are valuable information, make 24 one minute videos out of them, you can bust them out in a weekend. Uh, you have content for yourself for six months or a year, depending on your dispersal strategy. Uh, so yeah, most people's big, uh, biggest issue is waiting to start doing something like that. Mm. Um, thought leaders listening, what David just <laughs> provides you with is really good takeaway. Um, if you have clarity of content, clarity of tone, clarity of message, write down 24 one-liners um, that feel yeah. super clear and aligned, and then go record 24 one-minute videos on your phone, and you've got 24 videos to post. That's yeah, I do it at events uh, yeah. a lot. Um, and a way to think about a social media video, a big mistake, you know, I talk about what's one one-liner that you, you think is valuable to uh, a potential listener is the a big mistake people make in scripting these is they're so concerned with getting somebody to take the next step that they forget to actually say anything of value in their one minute content videos. If you can provide somebody with, uh, with, you know, here's some shit I would love you to know. Uh, here's a minute of valuable action steps, a minute of, uh, some tips. Uh, they're much more likely to see what else you have to say. Uh, yeah, because like, in, in the world that we live in today, people are being bombarded with information left, right, and center. And so to have something mm -hmm. delivered to them in um, like a sizable chunk, something that's easy to digest. Uh, and it's funny because a lot of, again, like a lot of the clients I work with try and overcomplicate everything too. They want to over deliver on video and it's like that actually overwhelms your audience and then they tune out, they don't listen. So I love this concept of like the one minute videos and providing like real actionable takeaways or tangible steps or whatever it is, something that they can really apply uh, because that makes people want more. I mean, I yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. I think of it uh, in college, I was uh, trying to stretch out my semesters because I wasn't ready to leave yet and <laughs> was just taking random stuff and ended up taking in, uh, etymology class called the, the secret life of words. Uh, this is all superfluous information that doesn't matter to the story. But uh, uh, all that to say, the professor at the beginning on the, the first day of class said, if I can offer you one promise, it's that every class you come to, you'll leave with at least one valuable party fact that you can tell at parties and get a huh, interesting fact. So if you think about your scripts like that, uh, everyone should have at least something in there that uh, that somebody feels like they didn't waste their time clicking on it. Mm. Um, and so if it's all like, go here and I'll tell you this, you're not finding anybody with any value and they have no reason to keep watching your stuff. Yeah. Mm. And I think, I, I mean, 
you tell me your take on this, but my feelings on that is that people feel like, well, I can't give away too much free shit in my video. So let me direct them here so I can get them in my funnel and then so on and so forth. But you yeah. lose people in that way because you're not giving anything of value in the video, right? Yeah. I mean, it's such a short-sighted idea of I want to try to have a chance to get somebody into this basket of people and then end up with a 20% close rate. Um, that's the idea of, again, 2008. Uh, I think uh, people, your listeners in particular, are trying to start movements, right? And mm -hmm. that sort of happens by having a very clear message. And I'd love to talk more about um, the, so how can people like me or my audience really start utilizing video content to bring their message to the masses, but also do this in a way that's um, not taking up too much of their time, energy, resources, et cetera. Like what are some of the, the hacks that you have to offer us? Yeah, I mean, I talked a bit uh, about it just a minute ago Yeah. Uh, with do it all at once. Uh, if, you, if you try to set aside a time every week to start making next week's stuff, you're going to end up finding reasons not to do it. Uh, if you can, uh, literally, the biggest, pro or the biggest objection we see with video all the time is a money issue. So let's go ahead and eliminate that right off the bat. Uh, okay. The only thing you need uh, is uh, your phone and ideally a friend to hold it for you, just so you don't have your arm up in every video. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can shoot between 12 and 24, that's, uh, that's your sweet spot for content videos. You're positioning uh, for new eyes on media. Uh, what those should look like um, is a brief introduction, maybe, uh, and that should be you know, nine words long, uh, which is just, hey, David here, uh, creative director of Driven Media. Then you go into the majority of it, which is a, uh, on-brand content, uh, delivering them, again, something that's of value to them right now. Uh, and then we're always looking for a soft call to action. That's as opposed to uh, something that would be on an opt-in page or something mm -hmm. uh, like that. It's just offering somebody and letting them know, hey, I've got more stuff. Uh, so that looks like, um, hey, if you're looking for any more tips, check out my page. I've got you covered. Can't wait to see you there. Just something like that. Uh, we always try to hone in at under a minute. I think people argue about, or people oftentimes worry about not having enough to say, right. when in reality, it's most of the time the opposite. Uh, we do this for a couple of reasons, but mainly because when we look at abandonment rates on videos, or, or rather when somebody stops watching at a time, it, it approaches upwards at 60% after the minute length. So we want to get somebody through your entire message into an end tag uh, before they click away, essentially. If they watch all the way through, that's a win for us. Okay, cool. Yeah, because that, that seems... So that I've heard conflicting um, things about mm -hmm. this, right? It's like you want to make your video really long because you want people to watch and you want to provide more info or you want to do these one minute videos. And I know that different platforms work differently. So is it that the one minute video works better on certain platforms or do you find that this is really like a sweet spot? So uh, the one minute video, I, I will differentiate that. Uh, okay. It, it works really well for my purposes in getting clients new unique viewers. So it's a lot easier for me to place something that somebody who's never met you will watch uh, with being one minute and it shows up on their feed. It promises them something uh, in exchange for a click in a minute of their time. Uh, works really well, gets good subscriber rates. The longer stuff, um, which I sort of group together uh, Facebook lives and uh, longer format video works really well if e or either directed towards your current follower base who are already really involved and interacting with you on social media mm -hmm. or if it's something that somebody has previously opted in for. Uh, I mean, just think about your own 
attention span online. If it's not something you've really seeked out, it's kind of unlikely you're going to sit and watch 30 minutes of something. Yeah, like, for example, YouTube, right? Like on YouTubers work, I, I feel they work a little, mm -hmm. a lot different. You know, people go on YouTube to search how to do this, how to be mm -hmm. online, how to in uh, download a WordPress theme or whatever. They go on for a purpose. And so when they're watching the video, it's easier for them to watch the whole video because they're trying to learn something. Mm -hmm. Whereas in social media, like I, I, if I, someone popped up on my feed and I didn't know who they were and they posted or they were doing this super long live, I don't necessarily think I would tune in, you know, versus yeah, absolutely. if it's someone I know, like, um, you know, there was this, like if it was, uh, someone famous that I knew I'd watch mm -hmm. that or someone that I really knew who was an influencer that inspires me, I would definitely watch that too. Yeah. And, uh, re and it's always important to remember it's a lot less important to get a lot of raw views and a lot more important to make sure you're getting the right sets of eyes on things. Mm. Uh, I run into people all the time who, you know, you can pay these companies uh, a couple grand, they export out, have uh, bots and low paid people driving up viewer accounts um, somewhere overseas. Uh, so I'll run in, I ran into somebody uh, on a strategy call who they had a hundred, they were wondering why they had 105,000 followers and only three likes on any views right. that they put forward. It's because they're not real. Um, so if you're making sure that you're having small core messages that outreach to people who would be way into what you're saying, uh, you, you're going to have a much more involved follower base and you're going to see when you do go uh, to start moving people towards your website, moving people towards webinars you're doing, things like that, uh, you're going to have a much higher click-through rate. Mm, that's super important because I think... Um we do get caught up in the likes and the views and the follows and the numbers, but if it's not the right eyes um, or the right people liking and, and right in terms of like your ideal audience, then that's not going to convert into anything for us. Yeah. I mean, it is, it, if it makes you feel better to have a <laughs> uh, hundred thousand followers, like by all means throw your money at it. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, it, but if your ego can stand it, would just wait the six months and grow your uh, your follower account organically, and I think you'll be a lot happier than you did. Yeah, yeah, I I definitely agree with that a thousand percent. But like, you know what? If you want the millions of followers, just do you boo. But I'm here to like actually bring people into a community, and you know, for anyone who's really looking to create some sort of longevity with their impact. I think community mm -hmm. is super important and that's why the connection with the video is super important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. The, the other thing that's important, I think, I guess I touched on this a little bit earlier, is uh, people have a lack of identity on all of their pages online in mm -hmm. that, okay, so just to start this off with a talking point, I should be able to identify 80% about you in my first, 20 to 30 seconds of looking at any page of yours. Gotcha. Uh, so there's such a, uh, if you have a lack of consistency there, you're really, uh, you're really throwing away potential views and potential uh, clients. Uh, you know, I mentioned I worked in reality TV for a while. Um, and the biggest question when people learn you work in reality TV is, you know, is it real? Uh, and the answer is, that it's not scripted, but it's heavily constructed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, behind every one of those episodes, there are, uh, you know, a hundred different producers, editors, uh, PAs, things like that, constructing something. Mm -hmm. uh, and like we said earlier, you know, your biggest blessing and curse is that uh, you're in charge of your own digital footprint. So you don't have, you know, as an entrepreneur, you may not have that, entire production team of people, but at the same time, you get to have final cut on what you look like online. Mm. And in our space, we get to have that. I mean, we're in control of that. You know, we don't have producers who are doing mm -hmm. that for us. We're in control of that. And so, um, yeah, I was on a show where, um, <laughs> Tell uh, us the dirt. <laughs> yeah, no, we had, we had, um, a, a whole lawsuit situation over that of um, people feeling like they were 
uh, or talent feeling like they were represented poorly. And it was all because a producer decided they were going to be a villain in an episode. Right. Um, but so you have the blessing of not having that <laughs> as an option. Yeah. And, you know, so with that being said, and I'd love to cap the conversation on this because I, this is super, this is something I'm really keen on. And mm -hmm. it's, it's this, yes, the fact that we're in charge of our digital pr footprint, but how do we then best maximize that power to mm -hmm. bring the right people into our orbit like i already know we've right. already heard about the one minute videos but like what else mm -hmm. do we have to be mindful of when putting out this video content because we have so many different ways of doing it now right we have like just posting recording and posting we yeah, have yeah. lives on different channels like youtube facebook and instagram have live features and i think twitter has some sort of live feature with periscope so mm -hmm. there what's the best way to do this to draw the right people into our orbit? Yeah, uh, that really depends on what level a business is at, uh, mm. but it all really boils down to uh, consistency and your promise to an audience, uh, by which I mean, once you have a schedule of how much somebody can expect to receive new content from you, uh -huh. uh, stick with that. Uh, generally, if it's a, company making 200,000 or, or under uh, annually, uh, I'll set up a content calendar that uh, has one main content video uh, posted once every two weeks. Uh -huh. uh, in between those two, we like to put uh, a Facebook Live to nurture audience you already have, and then a lot of uh, branded image content, which is basically okay. just anything that's your own message that can pop up in somebody's feed uh, and remind you uh, that you exist there. Uh, and I know we mentioned briefly earlier uh, boosting posts and stuff, but every social media, especially Facebook, has really powerful tools that even if you don't want to spend a fortune on a full-scale marketing campaign, mm -hmm. you're literally losing money by not throwing $5 every or a couple of days mm -hmm. uh, to get in front of new viewers. Um, and once you start to see how many new followers, new viewers, uh, you're getting on that, you can break that down and see uh, how many cents you're spending per new follower. And almost always it's, uh, it's worth it. Yeah. Um, but we, we focus on Facebook because it has, I find the best analytics tools. Uh, Instagram is kind of with that as well. Uh, a lot of people want to go toward LinkedIn because they find that that's where their audience is a lot. And I don't think it's there yet as far as a platform for what we're trying to do mm -hmm. of developing uh, a following, developing a solid fan base. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it might get there in three to four years as younger and younger people start uh, using it as a real social network. Right. Uh, but we're not really seeing the click throughs to it. Got it. But um, like I said, just to, wrap that whole meandering yeah. thing back. Um, uh, consistency of content out there, you can't not pick up new viewers. Mm. Okay, so be consistent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. um, David, do you have any final thoughts that you wanna share with our audience today? Uh, yeah, I mean, I touched on it earlier, but just remember your greatest gift is that you have final cut over your entire image. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not doing anything with it, it's literally like throwing money away. Uh, so definitely start uh, producing video. If Even if it's just once a month, uh, start building up that content. And in 12 months, when you look back at what your digital footprint is then, uh, you're going to be really happy that you decided to do that a year ago. Mm. Mm, great advice. Thank you so thanks. much, David. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, you make a, you definitely, I know for myself and our listeners have sort of taken out that pressure of trying to perfect um, and removed mm -hmm. the excuses. <laughs> yeah. So that it, you know, you can just get started now. There's really no excuse mm -hmm. that you can't do this unless you, re you legit don't have a phone. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's even more so than five years ago. Um, 
it just the market's changed and technology's changed uh, in a way that I would pressure everybody to start writing out scripts, you know, today. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here, David, and for sharing your wisdom. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, why don't you tell our listeners how they can stalk you and Driven Media online, and I'll put those links in the show notes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll go ahead and just give you my uh, email address. If you have any questions about video or if you want a free social media review, um, I set aside times every two weeks to go through people's uh, digital footprint, to go through video content, to look over scripts with them. Uh, so if you want to schedule a time for that, I think I'm uh, – this is January, so I should have some times available. Um, just shoot me a line at david at driveninc.com. That's david at D-R-I-V-E-N-I-N-C dot com. I'd love to chat with you. Um, in the meantime, just, you know, start making cool shit. <laughs> start making cool shit. Thank yeah, you so that's, that's on my business card. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, to our listeners, thank you so much for joining us on today's Thought Leader, where I'm challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. Uh, be sure to drop a rating and review on iTunes if you enjoyed this episode. And if you have any questions for me or David about this episode, please reach out to us. David has generously shared his email address and you can reach out to me on social media at I am Ruby. Thanks again. And I will see you all here next week for a brand new episode of today's thought leader. <laughs>